on this episode of the Grand Circle Tour podcast. The last few again. years. And, pronounce, and make sure you pronounce it. <laughs> Chips? Yes. Chips. But you, you might have made the blooper reel. Yeah. yeah, all the Star Wars ships. So so I haven't seen that movie in God knows how long. But is it is it Christmassy at all? Or is no, it, not it's, at all. It's <laughs> witches fighting Nazis right, and some like cartoon that. stuff. So... <laughs> Victor Naraki would like to take this opportunity to thank all of his clients and customers for their support throughout the past year. Victor would like to remind all of you that this is the time for family and friends to come together and celebrate this joyful season in whatever form it takes for you and your loved ones. Be kind to each other in this festive season and the new year ahead. On behalf of the Grand Circle Tour podcast and Victor Naraki, all the best for the holidays and here's a wish for a safe, healthy, and happy new year. All aboard passengers and welcome to another episode of the Grand Circle Tour podcast. My name is Dan Hansen and I will be your host and conductor as we take you on a tour around all things Disney. Joining me today are my two favorite co-hosts, starting with my absolute favorite. Which one am I going to go with? You guys are both looking at me with anticipation. Um, with anticipation uh, or with anticipation? Oh my goodness. Jay, how about Jay? We'll go with Jay. because you. Just I'll go first. first. Uh, aloha, guys. I am tired today, so if I fall asleep here in the studio, go ahead and poke me with a stick. We have the electric uh, prod set up, so we'll just zap you. When it's oh, I'm, I'm going to purposely fall asleep every five minutes. <laughs> That's better than coffee and a Red Bull together. Jay, do you have any waltz up this week? I have a quick waltz up. As we're sitting here recording this, I'm anxiously awaiting the mail to arrive because the LED light kit for my Lego Star Wars Cantina will be here. And it's probably going to be hard to get anything done the rest of the day. <laughs> I hear you. I, I, I'm gonna, I'll talk about my waltz up in a second, but I'm, I'm in a similar situation. As you. you do Lego also? Well, kind of. Okay. But a second here. After we introduce my other favorite co-hosts, Captain Stan Solo. Stan, how are you today? And what's up? I am amazing. I'm so glad you picked Jay first because it gives me a couple more seconds to come up with a waltz up because I, to be honest with you, I didn't have one set. And I still don't. I, I'm <laughs> not sure what to talk about. I don't know. There's, there's nothing going on for me Disney-wise right now. I should have been there this week. Those That's plans true. fell through. Me too. Yeah, I so I, I'm feeling your pain. Sorry. Yeah. Both yeah, of you guys were supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be. Stan, at you were supposed today. to be at a media event, right? Yeah. There's a media event happening this afternoon, and uh, between COVID and trying to get rid of that darn car, it 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 just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. We get you. But we they made the test easier now, and they're a lot less expensive. They're like, instead of being 150 bucks, they're like 60 bucks now. So. Good. So that's that's a good sign. Good stuff. Plus, I'm sure you can't wait to get to warmer weather eventually, because I already yeah. saw some snow at your house on your pictures. Oh, it's been, we've had snow for a month now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I got a shovel after we're done, because it snowed again yesterday. And it's supposed to snow and or freezing rain tonight. Ugh, oh, terrible. <laughs> terrible. It's getting cold in New York, but tomorrow I am off to Houston for a weekend, and I just checked the weather, and it's about 82 degrees tomorrow uh, on Friday or I will be there. So I'm looking forward to uh, spending the weekend in some warmer weather. Maybe get a round of golf in. You know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, Dan, just, just to say, just to interrupt real quick, warmer weather, getting golf in, getting away from the freezing temperature. This is why I am using Victor Naraki as my real estate agent to get me out of here. DisneyYourDoorstep.com. Exactly. Nice plug, Jay. Nice plug. So, uh, my waltz up real quick. Um, so today we are recording this episode on December 1st. And for all those with children in the house, you know all about uh, what happens on December 1st. And that means you start your advent calendars. Usually you get the little uh, cheap ones with the, with, the, with the crappy chocolate in it, right? We have those too. But now they've like evolved these, uh, these advent calendars. And Connor got one of the coolest ones that it's pretty hard for me not to play with and that is an avenger lego advent calendar. fun so every day he gets an, an another avenger in lego form that he puts together so any guesses on what december 1st was captain 
I was going to say Iron Man. Iron Man is close. It was actually Tony Stark, though. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so. I have, I have to say Connor is better than I am because I got the Star Wars Lego advent calendar they asked last year. <laughs> yeah, and rather than that. start on the first, I ripped them all open when I got it. <laughs> I was going to say, I knew if it was up to him. He would have. He would have. He would have. And Liam got a, a dinosaur one. So every day he gets a little toy dinosaur. So he's very excited about that. I meant to get the Star Wars advent calendar this year and it, for whatever reason, just slipped my mind and never did. Maybe this... they're half price now. Well, this year's uh, because it's this year is a little different than last year's version, and this year's looked really cool. So, yeah, but they're expensive. Some of them are really expensive. Yeah, yeah they're they're expensive. So. so, speaking of uh, advent calendars and Christmas stuff, uh, as we enter December, I thought it'd be a cool idea to have a show to talk about some of our favorite Christmas Disney traditions. So, I asked my co-host to uh, think of some things that they do. Um, relating to Disney and the holidays, and we'll kind of talk about them a little bit, and, and hopefully you, our passengers, our listeners, can uh, share some of your own, too, because it's always a fun topic to talk to with other Disney fans about your different traditions. So, anyone want to start? Jay, how about you start, since I started with you on the opening? All right. Um, you have I am, good. Yeah, I, I, you know what, what kicks off the holiday season for me? Uh, when I first moved out, got my first apartment, there was this... And I'm not a Winnie the Pooh fan, but there is this Christmas Tigger house piece. And I it's not Christmas if I pull it out every year. If I don't pull it out every year, put it on the mantle. <laughs> Does it make noise? No, it's and it's broken. I've had to put the tail back together. It's got a few <laughs> dings over the decades. It's I don't know why, but this Tigger is it's not Christmas without Tigger every year. I love, we love Tigger. Liam is a big Tigger fan. When, again, I, same thing with you. We are not Winnie the Pooh fans in this house. Yeah. But when we went to Disney in, um, what was it, July, we went on the Winnie the Pooh ride and we went into the gift shop and Liam just immediately ran to a stuffed Tigger. And of course, Daddy yeah. had to buy it right away. And now he's obsessed with Tigger. So that's Tigger just what gets happened. a pass. Tigger gets a pass. Tigger is cool. <laughs> He's definitely he's the sweet. coolest of all of the. He is the coolest. Winnie the Pooh <laughs> characters. Give me enough sugar, and I'm, I turn it into Tigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one. That's a good one. Sorry, I think a lot of us uh, have those special uh, pieces that you know, we pull out every year, and I'll talk about some of mine as well. What about you, Stan? Well, I I don't think you could have picked a worse co-host for this <laughs> this topic because I don't have a heck of a lot of. Uh, Tradition. I mean, I'm I'm literally staring at a video of you right now, and I I could probably pick out a couple of them just by looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do. I do he, have... he says this with Jack Skellington is... and Santa hats behind him. <laughs> and is that a Pluto wrapped in a Christmas tree? No, that's Pluto in his Christmas sweater. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> how, how could I get that mistaken? But... <laughs> uh, but one thing I do do, and this is probably my my main christmas tradition and i've been doing this one for years even though we don't have a christmas tree because a cat will destroy it in two seconds well maybe 20 but is the hallmark christmas ornaments and i've mentioned this plenty of times that i i collect all the star wars ships and lately the I last few years and, and make sure you pronounce it. ships yes ships. You, you might have made the blooper reel yeah yeah, all the Star Wars ships, like the TIE Fighter, the Millennium Falcon. I think I have like three or four Millennium Falcons. They keep re-releasing it. Yeah. And I, I can some goofball buy them. And what's really cool is, I mean, we, when we did have our tree up, the older ones were plug-in. They, were, they weren't battery operated because everybody used to have those plug-in lights. And now it's all these LED lights or trees that come pre-lit. So they don't have yeah. them anymore like that. They have batteries and you got to actually push the button. But so you would have like... The Emperor Palpatine on his throne, the Death Star, a TIE fighter, an X-Wing fighter, uh, all these different ships. And when you plug them in, they would start up. So the entire tree would make this noise of every Star Wars sound you can imagine. Lightsabers <laughs> going at the same time. <laughs> and for my kids growing up, that was kind of like the Christmas song or Sounds theme good. or music for them <laughs> to hear the Christmas tree be turned on and you hear vampire <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> that sounds great to me. It, 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 and it's kind of like my, my, my kids were like, 
that's our Christmas theme is the tree turning on it every Star Wars sound at the same time. Ad Ats walking. Okay, Stan, you need two different color trees just for your Star Wars ornaments a dark side tree and a light side tree. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. But yeah, so so it's the it's the Star Wars Christmas tree and we have the Yoda on top with the lightsaber and every I'd say probably about 99% of the ornaments are Star Wars on that that's tree. Cool. I think the only one that isn't is maybe our first Christmas together, which is a couple of squirrels sharing a nut or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and and the two girls maybe first Christmas. <laughs> We see what your priorities are in life, Stan. We understand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I didn't I didn't write that on uh, my list, but it definitely is one of my traditions, too, because every year, um, and we've only started this the last couple of years, but we go and get the Hallmark um, ornaments. And um, when we come down Christmas morning for Santa, there's always one ornament on each of our stockings hanging. So Santa knows. Cool. Santa knows. Santa knows. Exactly. That's cool. So um, I'm going to start with one just because it was the idea, the reason that the idea of the show came about. Uh, we talked about it on the last episode I was on. We've talked about it in the past a lot. I know Stan loves this one, um, but Santa does this, not me. Santa does this, where when we come down on Christmas morning, we have individual wrapping paper, and that's how we know whose presents are whose. No labels. It just goes by wrapping paper. You kind of figure it out as you go along. And each year, the wrapping paper is Disney-themed. Although, this year, I've heard from Santa that it may uh, deviate a little bit because my older guy is getting into some other things. So, I heard it may be like Super Mario or something like that. But you could at least made it Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Did, I, I think, so the Marvel has been the last couple of years. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um what are, what are you gonna do when all of a sudden he doesn't want to go to disney anymore i see i don't think that'll ever happen i don't we we uh connor's homesick right now so we picked liam up for uh from uh preschool and we had the disney channel on uh serious radio mm -hmm. and they had disney park hour so it was all songs from the disney parks and it was uh the country bears was on and you know he's sitting there nine years old on a sick day sit, screaming out every word of the country bear so i don't think that's ever gonna happen you are raising him right <laughs> yeah i say just wait till the teens hit <laughs> it seems to happen i'm all but then they come back but then they come back yeah you really want to go back to disney yeah so anyway that's that's my favorite uh one of my favorite traditions um you know and and santa with a little bit of input from me, he calls me. Um, we usually hunt for the perfect wrapping paper. And I hear that there's some good ones this year. So I'll make Great. sure after Christmas to post some pictures. I absolutely love that tradition that you guys yeah. do. That is really good. And the money that Santa saves on name tags, you could spend <laughs> on premium wrapping paper, the premium Disney wrapping paper. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I love the idea of coming downstairs and you know what's yours. Yeah. 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 And, you know what happens is that all the presents are under the tree but then there's four presents that are like a little bit in front of the tree lined up right so you and each of them are in different paper and then we kind of open those four together and figure out what paper goes with it oh, okay yeah cool so. all right jay do you have anything else uh i do we have a disney movie we watch every christmas morning hmm. While we get wrap presents and have breakfast, we watch bed knobs and broomsticks. Wow. It was uh, when we first uh, moved in together, it was on, on Christmas Day, and it has become our, our Christmas Day tradition Very ever cool. since that first Christmas together. Something about a, a story of a, a bunch of misfit losers who become a family <laughs> just, just hits me right here. So, so I haven't seen that movie in God knows how long, but is it? Is it Christmassy at all? Or is no, it, not it's at all. It's <laughs> witches fighting Nazis right, and some like cartoon <laughs> stuff. So, I mean, <laughs> it's just funny. It's one of those things. It was on on our first Christmas together. And so it's been on every single exactly. Christmas that we've been together. Listen, if you think it's a Christmas movie, it's a Christmas movie, right? Just die like Hard. Old, die Hard, exactly. I was just going to say that. Just like the old Die Hard thing. Just like... Your opinion is the only thing that matters. So. Right. That is cool. I like that. Very cool. 
Stan, what about kinda, you? That kind of helped you out with the solo show because one of the songs in the Grand Championships was a bit, and I didn't know that you did watch that movie that often. And it, that got you a lot of points. I, I got four points off that one. Yeah, exactly. And I still came in second. And you still came in second. <laughs> By the way, Stan, this week's live show, um, I wish I was there live. I, I only watched the replay, but I was every single one of those I got like in, in like three seconds. <laughs> well, it was only three. <laughs> well, <that's true. laughs> but that first one, you know, when, when it was, uh, I think it was Elf, uh, Home Alone, and um, Christmas Vacation, probably. No, no, no. It was Rudolph. Yeah. It was Rudolph. And I'm sitting there screaming at the at the replay of the live. Like, what? How can you guys not get this? <laughs> that was such a fun live show. If you guys didn't get a chance to watch it yet, go back and listen to it on, on YouTube. Because I did something a little bit different on the uh, trivia. Where basically it was only three movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was a few a few extras tossed in once in a while. Well, it was it was done at 2 a.m. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun, that one. I don't think I've laughed so hard in a long time. <laughs> it was a good show. <laughs> All right, Stan, you're up. Okay, so Jay has his movie that he watches. Uh, the thing that we do that's Disney related on Christmas morning is the uh, Christmas Day Parade. That's on my we, list. We, yep. Yeah, we watch that one. Uh, and generally, we're kind of pretty busy Christmas Day, so for the most part, I record it. And sometime between Christmas Day and New Year's Day, I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah. We put it on, um, but you're right. We are busy too, but we always have it on in the background. And then mm-hmm. we also record it. And then at some point we go back and watch it, you know, again. Yeah. Now this year they also did the show that was, that aired last Sunday, I believe a couple days ago, um, where it was like a Christmas in Disney. I don't know if you guys got a chance to watch that. I did not catch that. Yeah. It was really good actually. But from what I heard is that they filmed both of them at the same time. So some of the singers are going to be the same singers that are on the three. Hopefully it's a different song and not like I did on the <laughs> on the movie thing where it's the exact same. Um, yeah, so, you know, and, and um, I, he- I also heard that the people that sign up to be extras uh, were there for like 10 hours this time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> they were filming two different shows. How <laughs> many lightning lane passes did they get? Say it again, Jay? How many lightning lane passes did they get? Because I would be negotiating that 10 hours. No, no. The way Disney works now is you have to pay Disney to be an extra. You don't get paid. That's that's how it works now. You know, it was a, um, one of the brilliant ideas from, you know, corporate. So. Yeah. <laughs> don't give me any ideas. I know. <laughs> <laughs> would you guys want to do that? Would you want to spend like a vacation day, like six hours, eight hours? watching the um, same parade it's over funny over i had this i had this conversation with my wife when we were filming it because i told her that story mm-hmm. and she was like that's that sounds terrible and i'm like no way i would love to do that that's like it's like right up my alley <laughs> and see i'm in the other corner i'm absolutely not i if if i'm at disneyland and i hear the matterhorn calling or i hear if i hear something i have to run and get on i can't not go play i can't just stand there <laughs> You know, and they they did it in. They usually do it this way, but they, I, more so this year than than I've seen in the past, where they did it in all the different parks, right? So mm-hmm. every single park had a quote unquote performance. So you have people in every park, not just the Magic Kingdom, you know. Yeah, and and I remember seeing those pictures online where they they did Hollywood Studios decorations on one side of the street, and they still had the Halloween decorations on the other side <laughs> yeah. of the street, and people were like, "What is going on here?" And it was okay. okay. I, I can explain that real quick. That is for commercials. They just do it real quick to shoot some stuff for promotions. Yeah. And then they switch it back. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what they did. Yeah. But the, the, the guests that saw it were like, "What's going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, if as a local, I would do it. If I, if I was off that day and I was able to do it and I lived out there and, and Disney World was my backyard, I would definitely do it. But I don't think as a tour, like for someone that can only go out for, you know, five days a year, I don't think I'd waste a day doing that. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would, I would <laughs> tell the family, hey, you guys hang out in the pool today. I'm going to go uh, film for 10 hours. <laughs> Plus okay. they do it at night too, right? So you don't necessarily have to spend the whole day there. Oh, no, it isn't, no, it's not during the day on at Magic Kingdom. Is it? No. I... No, the parade itself. Oh, the parade cool. itself. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, because right. they because they close off Main Street and they have everybody go yes. around. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. 
There were definitely performances at night, though, so maybe that's why it was 10 hours. It went all day long. Yeah. So how about you, Dan? What's your second? So um, I'll stick with um, I'll stick with the TV shows that we watch. Um, not necessarily on Christmas morning, but definitely in the days leading up to Christmas. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas and Twice Upon a Christmas cartoon. Mm-hmm. I don't um, think I've seen twice, but I've seen once. Oh, see, twice is my favorite, Stan. Really? Okay. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little reason behind it. When Connor was first born, not first born, I would say maybe a, a year. Um, the only thing that would like calm him down and make him just sit still for a while was twice upon Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas. The songs. <laughs> oh. And I remember laying, this is when we lived in the old house, you know, and I would put it on DVR and it would be the only time I can get like a couple minutes sleep <laughs> and kind of would sit there and just be completely quiet and hum every single song. So it kind of was one of those things where I was sleeping and it like drilled into my head every single song. And it probably lasted from December up until maybe July. <laughs> Right. And um, you know, it's just one of those things that I always and now every year it's it's one of those things where I put it on to <laughs> Stan is literally getting attacked by his cat right now. It's pretty funny. <laughs> uh we put it on and and uh now kind of kind of rolls his eyes at it, but it, it has a little special meaning for me. So. When you hear the music, do you start getting tired? <laughs> yeah, I always take a nap when I watch it. It's weird. <laughs> The song that Max sings for anyone that knows what I'm talking about, uh, that's the that's the song that gets us like really tired. I don't know why. That's always where I would sleep during that one, even though it's probably the best song of the series. So, so don't insert it right here; you'll fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good one, Jay. Any others? Yes, my absolute favorite Christmas tradition of all is every year. I get my nephews, I send them a, a Disney ornament. I only send them classic characters. And so one day they in every they have their own little tree. It's just Disney ornaments from Uncle Jay. And passengers you can't see it, but Dan is Dan. This is this year. So I got my eldest one, Mickey's house oh, from Town. Town. And you turn it around and Mickey's in his house. And you see wow. it. Yeah, that's an awesome. Where did you get that from, Jay? Uh, Disneyland. I ordered it. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, this is from Disneyland, and so is this one. This is from the parks. It's uh, it's dopey. And you, it's the old-fashioned kind. You pull the string, and his little legs oh, move. That was really cool. Yeah, that's my very most favorite Christmas Christmas tradition of all. Very cool. Got to fill some pictures up on. Uh on our Facebook page or Instagram to show I, our I'll, I'll do that today, yeah. Um, luckily, they they're, they don't listen to the show because they're really young. <laughs> <laughs> they do, but that's when mommy lets them. Right, right. Very cool. Love the Disney ornaments. All right, Stan, what about you? Um, For me, now, I know you generally in the U.S., they like to, you don't put up decorations until after Thanksgiving. But it gets it's really cold here already. <laughs> so I like to put up my own. You do it in July. I like to do it in July. Yeah. No. So generally, uh, the Halloween decorations come down November first, and the Christmas decorations go up outside November first. And one of the things that I'm really proud of that I did like a, years ago, and actually this year, it was looking worse for wear. And it's a big, huge Mickey I made out of wood, like a hidden Mickey, the three circles. And it's mm-hmm. probably about five feet tall. And it has, it's like a, it's like three wreaths, one giant wreath and then two smaller wreaths that I made. And that goes up every year. I'm a, in a prominent place in my house outside and it, and it lights up and I really like it a lot, but it was looking worse for wear. So this year in particular, I, I got all new greenery for it and it's looking nice and sharp again. Very cool. Yeah. So that's, I've seen pictures of it. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Was it was it BB-8 that rolled off your roof and rolled down, down the street? Everything rolled off the roof and <laughs> rolled down the street. We had a huge windstorm uh, and and like an ice storm, and I have all these inflatables up on my roof and that and and uh, yeah and, and I rolled uh, baubles on the tree and 
everything blew away. <laughs> to oh, go, go on a search, and find everything, put it back up again. The ropes broke actually. The ropes that come with them, they, yeah, they, they, yeah. they broke, and I ended up wow. getting stronger rope to, to tie them oh, down. Yeah. I have not put my Christmas decorations up yet outside. Inside, they're all up, but outside, um, and I'm not going to be able to do it this weekend because I'm away. So we'll see mm -hmm. if we'll see if what happens this year, if they go up at all. I have to tell you guys, we're at the point with the downstairs of the house where now we're starting to paint and finish some, some final things down here. It's I don't think I have to decorate this year, and I'm I'm cool with that. I have to pull <laughs> things out, set them up, do the whole thing. It's all kind of construction right now, so. Uh, I'm good with that this year. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite um, decoration Disney related, well, probably my favorite decoration period about, I'd say it was about 10 years now, maybe yeah, about nine, 10 years ago for Christmas. Uh, my team at work got me this awesome, awesome Christmas present. And what it is, is it's Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, and Goofy. Um, little figurines i would guess and they're they're attached by by uh bluetooth and we they sing and they all play an instrument right so mickey plays uh the saxophone minnie plays uh i think the piano donald plays the electric guitar goofy's got the stand-up bass and daisy plays the flute and they play 10 different christmas songs and the way it works is you put all five of them in different parts of the room right and if someone comes over and, and they don't know you know what's going on you have them press the button and each since there's 10 songs each character has uh two songs where they start off with a little solo right so say it's um mickey saxophone so mickey will sing, uh do on the saxophone a little bit with deck the halls and then the rest of them all jump in and from all different parts of the room the whole band plays together and um it's it's the coolest thing ever and i, I have i've looked for it online on ebay after that i can never find it anywhere just in case they have a break um but luckily i keep them very very nicely uh wrapped in the off season um and they're just the coolest things really really cool now my little guy is obsessed with pressing buttons so we have to <laughs> move a button presser <laughs> yeah <laughs> pushing buttons literally and figuratively just that <laughs> and um we've had to move them out of the way so we'll see how much use they get this year <laughs> i don't know what's worse having a cat that's into everything or a kid that's into everything. <laughs> <laughs> but what? i'm going i'm going to do a video on it i'll, I'll put that uh, as a reel up on instagram so everyone can see how it looks please Oops, do because that okay. sounds so cool yeah and it was Sorry, like Stan. you know 10 it was 10 years ago when it first came out right so like not that bluetooth wasn't around then but it wasn't like as prominent as like everything is now yeah so 10 years ago we were like what this is the coolest thing still people still say it's the coolest thing because they're startled a little bit when they hear like different instruments coming from all around the house you know but and they're all in sync and it's very cool i have something similar to that and it's um the cuckoo clocks disney cuckoo clocks and it's mickey oh Minnie. sorry Goofy uh, and Pluto. I'm, I'm so I'm so sorry. My phone just went off. Hi, oh. mom. We're in the middle of recording an episode. <laughs> I am so sorry, everybody. Hey, say hi to the audience. Well, hi, audience. I will uh, check with you later to see how your show went. Hi. Fantastic. Rock on. Have a good one. Love you. Bye. Hi, mom. Love hi, mom. <laughs> sorry, everyone. Jay's mom, everyone. Jay's mom. So what were you did saying, she, Stan? Did she get? A, I have something similar to that, but they're like cuckoo clock, but they're all wired to each other. It's not Bluetooth. Gotcha. And, and we got it. Oh, I'm guessing 20 years ago. Yeah. And uh, and the doors open up and they come out and each one sings a note. So there's like four different notes That's basically, cool. but they do all I don't know, like 20 some different Christmas carols uh, with this these cuckoo clocks that come out and it's a pretty cool. Yeah. Very. Not cool. gonna lie, I'm kind of jealous over here. I need to find something cool like those. <laughs> All right. Got any more, Jay? Um, you know what? I am. <clears throat> I have one. It's I. God, we are so different the day that we are at night. 
We are so different. Recording in the middle of the day. Passengers, we're recording this at uh, 1 in the afternoon Eastern time, and we're usually Sunday night recording, but yeah. since I'm away this weekend, we have to do it a little early, and it is a little different. Different feel. We're, so. we're so off today, so uh, I'll try to fix that in editing, but uh, yeah, it's so different. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I have, you talked about Christmas shows. I have two TV shows I watch every Christmas Eve. Uh, one of them, Doctor Who, Doctor Who and the Runaway Bride. It's not Christmas uh, if it, without a giant spider trying to eat the earth. It, it's also not Disney, but okay, go ahead. It's not Disney, <laughs> but you know I'm going to slip in Doctor Who. Um, but there is an episode of the Disneyland show from the 60s at, at Christmas at Disneyland with Walt Disney. And we have to watch that every single Christmas Eve. That's a good one. We have watched that as well. Not on Christmas Eve, but just during the holidays, we do watch that. It's 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 nice. It's old school, and it's kind of nice to have Walt at the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Walt may or may not be the uh, ornament that I that Santa got me this year. Don't know if you guys have seen that one. Pieces? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. That, that's a cool cool ornament. Yeah. Did you see the? Uh... <laughs> There's a meme going out there where someone saw that that ornament. And if you guys don't know what, what we're talking about, it's uh, I guess they're bronze and it's Walt and Mickey on suitcases, right? Sam, is that what it looks like? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um The partner statue from California Adventure, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if you look at it closely, you don't really know that it's Walt, and it kind of does look like Freddy Krueger a little. So someone had commented on a picture of it saying, why would I buy an ornament with Freddy Krueger and Mickey Mouse? This doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't you buy an ornament with Freddy Krueger and Mickey Mouse together? <laughs> it's pretty funny. I do have it. But I guess I don't have it within reach. <laughs> I think I have, it, I have it in the other room. I did get that one this year as well. Yep. All right, Stan, do you have any more? Yeah, I got a couple more in an honorable mention. Um, this one is more for New Year's than it is for for christmas but so for new year's traditionally we have uh just my my well you, my one daughter's married and moved away now and she has her own family going on but so when the girls were little and uh, my wife and myself we would stay up till midnight and i i was kind of responsible for new year's and my wife was kind of responsible for christmas as far as preparing i would help and she would help but i I'd, I'd do the shopping and everything and my thing is getting all these different hors d'oeuvres so when you display the hors d'oeuvres, I have a fair collection of Star Wars plates and dishes and trays. So pretty much our New Year's Eve party is Star Wars themed, whether anyone likes it or not, because I'm the one preparing it. <laughs> and we got like the Death Star bowl and the Chewbacca plate and and uh, there's a stormtrooper holding a bowl and Dude, I want to go to your house for New Year's. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of, it's kind of. I think it's different. It's not very traditional <laughs> when that most people would have, but it's kind of a tradition uh, for our family. And and uh, as the kids got older, it was like they started noticing that yeah, we have a Star Wars New Year's and a Star Wars Christmas tree. So, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't, you know. Stan, you and I need to do an episode where we just geek out on Star Wars, just our yeah. Star Wars geekdoms. Hey, what if Disney never bought Star Wars? What would you talk about on this podcast? <laughs> well, exactly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like, and and like, like honestly, we still talk so, about it. <laughs> so yeah, so like, I mean, like, I was a Disney fan first when I was little, watching the Wonderful World of Color. But once when Star Wars came out, it was like, okay, I'm full on Star Wars. Right. right. And and then as I got older, I kind of got back into Disney. And when they merged, I was like, okay, this is perfect. And then they got <laughs> Marvel, and they got the Muppets, and they got Pixar. And I was like, okay, all my favorite things are combined. <laughs> <laughs> very cool I'll, uh, I'll i'll give one of mine and, and I, w I was going to use this as an honorable mention but you kind of kind of reminded me of it um for new year's because we usually have this meal it's a, it's a meal i'm going to talk about in between christmas and new year's that week um and jay maybe you know where it's exactly from my wife found it on one of those disney cookbooks that i own mm -hmm. Um, but it's Disneyland beef stew. I don't know where you actually buy it from. But um, the cool thing is it comes in a bread bowl. And the way you cut it is it's a hidden Mickey as a bread bowl. It's, 
So I, I don't know. I don't know where it actually is. Maybe one of the passengers you guys New, can New tell Orleans us. Square. Okay, I lost you somewhere there. New, New Orleans Square bread bowls are the best. Okay. I, I would go and eat the clam chowder bowl because they, they scoop the, the bread out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pour the soup. Oh, I could eat those all day. So you know? the Disney cookbook like teaches you. There's like a whole like four pages on how to actually scoop it so that it forms the Mickey, you know, the, the hidden Mickey. Um. Okay, you lost but, me here. So you got a bread bowl, and you so you do three scoops in it to make it a Mickey. I don't know. I don't really know how my wife does it, to be honest. But what, I don't. I'm <laughs> what not I know when it. it when it's served to me, the stew is in a bread bowl, and the bread that has been taken out of the bowl forms Mickey's ears. Yeah. So because gotcha. the, the bread is the bread is circular. Exactly. The yeah, bread is like gotcha. a circular bread, and so, um, so it you know. It's just one of those things where it's like one of our, it's it's a nice when the weather's cold that that, that kind of meal. We're not big stew eaters. It's more for the Mickey Mouse than anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the bread. Yeah, we just want to look at it and take a Man picture. And, and... The stew so, in the garbage and eat the bread. <laughs> so do you eat his ears first? No, I dip the ears in. That's what I do. Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. That's how you do. It. So. And then we always say, wow, this was good. We should have this more often, and, and we never have it again until yeah. the next year. Yeah. <laughs> Traditions. So, yeah, exactly. Never do them again. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Why don't we go around and just do some honorable mentions, if you guys have some, or just rapid fire some of your other ones? Um, my art. <clears throat> there is a record I play every New Year's Eve. It is by a... Oh, man, my notes are all messed up. <laughs> there is a record album I play every year. It's from 1961, and it's a big band album that was recorded at the Disneyland Hotel on New Year's Eve, 1961. And so we play that every New Year's Eve with some champagne. Very cool. I was wondering if you were going to mention that one, because I did know you do that. Every yeah. Year. I didn't know you listen to that every year. I was saving that for the end. <laughs> <laughs> What's the album, Dre? Right? Uh, it's again? called Bunny Bear Again. Uh, I'm getting surf today right here. <laughs> Very cool. No, it's uh, Bunny Bear Again, New Year's Eve, Disneyland Hotel is just the name of the album. Uh, I'll send Holly a picture of the album and she can put it with the uh, collage for the week. Awesome. Good. All right. Stan, what about you? Any rapid fire last ones? Yeah, so I have one, uh, and I also have a, something I'd like to start. And every year I say I'm going to start this, and I never ever do. A new tradition. <laughs> a, a new tradition. I want to start a new tradition. It's actually two. One is to go to Disney World every year at Christmas or Disneyland, and I've, I've never done that. So, so that's what I'd like to start. I'd like um, to I just, start. I just, go I just ahead. I want to say, Stan, if you use Victor Naraki, DisneyDoorstep.com, you can go to Disney World every day. Exactly. <laughs> You could watch Disney World from your house. Yes. The uh, Rebel Force Radio podcast, they've been doing this for so long. But what they do is they, they set it so that they watch Star Wars New Year's Eve. And they start it just at the right time. So at midnight, the Death Star explodes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's something like every year I say to my wife, let's watch Star Wars and have it that midnight the Death Star. And she goes, I don't want to do that. I want, she wants to watch the ball drop in New York. I'm like, no, but the Death Star exploding is way better than the ball dropping in New York. So we never have done it. But I, every year I, I always bring it up to her and every year it gets shot down. But that is something I'd love to, to start. That seems like a lot of work for like that's, a little bit of a, a payoff. But that's so <laughs> rad, though. Well, if you go to Rebel Force Radio, he tells you what time exactly you get your world clock set and you start right. press play. And he has it set like, like Jimmy Mac sets it so that if you're watching on Disney Plus or if you're watching the DVD that came out in 1982 or if you're watching the DVD that came out in 1992, if you're watching the, and he has what? everything. Because it's all up. like a little bit off. Is, yeah. Is that what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Because they keep editing and changing it a time. Oh, every wow. Time, that's eh? so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So he tells you exactly when to press play at what time. So that you get it right at midnight. He has it all figured out. Yeah. I am yeah. gonna do that this year. <laughs> so am I. So am I. Right. <laughs> I'll be sleeping by 9 p.m. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, and the other the other tradition is something that uh we're gonna be doing our, our this is a bit of a tease. I do it with you guys, and I do it with the rest of the Grand Circle Tour, is we do a Christmas special. And we did one last year, that was our first one, 
that where we kind of did a different type of thing. We're doing that again this year. So that's something to look forward to coming out that we're all working hard on, especially Ken, voiceover <laughs> guy Ken, <laughs> doing great. working hard on. Thank you, but, Ken. But uh, it's going to be something for you, for you, the listeners, to uh, join us in this tradition, to listen to the uh, Grand Circle Tour Christmas special coming out soon. Yeah, so so I'm just going to give Stan some credit here because Stan always thinks of the Christmas idea and he always comes up with a great one. And this year, without giving anything away, it's a really, really good one. And um, probably the most work that we've ever put in. <laughs> and I say we, like, light loosely because uh, Ken's doing a lot of the work. And um, No, let's just say Ken is editing the Christmas show. Ken Thank is editing. you so much, Ken. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. But Thank not you. only is Ken editing it, but Ken is, I guess I can say this, he's like directing it too, right? So um, he he's put me through a lot of work the last couple of days. Let me, say. <laughs> <laughs> let me put it this way. You guys know I love to edit the episodes. When I'm going, yes, Ken, please take this away. You know it's going to be big. Ken has told me a couple of times in the last couple of uh, days, not good enough, Dan. You got to do it do that over. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> With feeling, you know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> this time mean it use your heart this time <laughs> can you not be so so boring <laughs> but uh yes yeah. yes ever passengers you have to give it a listen that'll come out christmas week right we haven't heard it yet but we know it's awesome <laughs> yeah we haven't yeah. Heard it. <laughs> and some some special guests will yeah be joining us too Mm-hmm. God, I just want to spoil it, but I'm going to shut up because it's such yeah. a great one this year. <laughs> I got a good idea for next year, guys. Oh, you're already thinking of next I'm year. I'm already thinking about next year's. <laughs> if it's if it's any more work, we let us know early so we can start yeah. working on it. Do yeah, we, we can start working on next year's now. Start it in July. I think it'll start in July next year. <laughs> but in, in, in like two or three years from now, it'll be like a whole Broadway production. <laughs> I know. Thing and dance. And... <laughs> well, the last episode, I was like, hey, passengers, it's the first ever GCT on ice. Watch out. I'm going to have to eat those words. We're all going to be <laughs> ice competing next. Oh, and Holly can't skate, so she has to work on that. Neither can I. Neither can Jay. Jay has to work on it, too. You guys got to work on your skating. <laughs> Like yeah, I'm gonna need you to learn how to ice skate, Jay. Yeah. yeah. Can you can you do a can you do can a, you do a triple lutz? Can you do a triple lux? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll end uh, with a few of my quick hit. Do you have anything else, Stan? Or you no, that was my two. Yeah. All right. Um, I have I have just two others that I want to mention. I mentioned this before, but I'm a big sock guy. I love Disney socks. Right, I'm a big collector mm-hmm. of Disney socks. So uh, that is a typical present that i get from numerous people is different disney socks uh but i always look forward to them actually i I gotta be honest with you i you know i've been laid up the last last month or so after my heart attack but i'm feeling a lot better but what i did is i had to go through my literally hundreds and hundreds of pairs of socks because my wife was just like there's no way we could keep this many socks out (laughs) so i had to go through them and like kind of like purge so it was a little sad getting rid of some of them but hey now we have room for some new ones christmas and um the last one i have this is <laughs> this is a this is a tradition this is what i do every cyber monday and i just did it last monday is i always go on uh shop disney and spend a million dollars on shop <laughs> disney <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, because they do give the discounts and the free shipping and, and things like that. And um, luckily for me is I had some of my Visa point rewards that I used. I, I think I've talked about this in my last trip. I had like over a thousand. I think I had like twelve hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. Reward points. Yeah. And, you know, it got to the point where my last trip. I was like <laughs> I was buying like, you know, uh, spring rolls for like random people online she's like hey you want a spring roll like i got money just to give away (laughs) so i ended up with a couple hundred dollars left over on it and i didn't know that i up until like a month or two ago that i could use that on shop business so um now you're sorry about everybody's in the park spring rolls (laughs) yeah all right you're gonna go find them and ask for that money back (laughs) so i was able to make some purchases maybe a purchase or two to some people on this podcast too we'll see and those are my holiday traditions. 
good ones. Yeah. Passengers, let us know what your Disney holiday traditions are. We'd love to hear. Um, comment on our Instagram or our Facebook posts, um, and, and we'll share some of them on uh, maybe some of our live shows. That'd be great. Yeah. Stan, anything uh, coming up besides the Christmas episode? Special? Uh, nothing I can think of. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about our Christmas episode coming out. Yep, that would be great. And uh, I don't know if we can say this. I guess we could say this. A- another special show coming up. Um, the New Year's show. The yes. New Year's show. Yeah. So yep. that'll be... You uh, do not want to miss it. You do not want to miss that. We're going to have some special announcements. Uh, mm-hmm. Was it two years ago? We had uh, like four big announcements where we announced some new uh, hosts and some new team members. So we have even bigger announcements. Are you are them. you spoiling or teasing? I can't tell. Just a tease. Just a tease. Okay. Just a tease. <laughs> new Year, new announcements. New announcements. Yeah. Big things in store for the GCT podcast in 2022. Definitely. I'm really excited. Next year will be our best ever. Next year is our fourth season. That's crazy. Please. Fourth season. I've known you guys for four years, and you're still not sick of me. We still haven't <laughs> met you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we keep these relationships fresh, is we don't actually meet Tell each other. Guys, Mickey's not so scary. We already have our theme. We just have to show up together. <laughs> Our costumes, which uh, mine is not much of a costume, as we've learned today. No pants. No <laughs> pants. No pants for Dan. <laughs> anyway, passengers, thanks so much for joining us. Very happy holiday to all. And we will see you on the next show. Ken, take it away. And let's never record the day again. If you would like to keep the adventure going after the show, be sure to like our Facebook friends page, Grand Circle Tours Magical Ticket Holders. While you're on Facebook, like our group page, Grand Circle Tours. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Grand Circle Tours Podcast, as well as on Instagram, GCT Podcast, and our YouTube channel, Grand Circle Tour. If you would like to email us, drop us a line at gctpodcast at gmail.com. T-shirts and other fun merchandise can be found at tpublic.com. Simply search Grand Circle Tour Podcast. If you enjoyed your adventure, leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Only one rule, make it good. All logos, sounds, songs, and music that are made by and for Disney and its affiliates are the full ownership of the Disney Corporation and are not, nor are they intended to be, the ownership of the Grand Circle Tour podcast. Thank you for riding with us, and welcome home.